Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me for part two of the superhero RPG talk. So my stream got cut off abruptly. I was live streaming. I had uh, weather problems and got knocked off the internet and it was cut off abruptly. So I'll sum that up and then I'll go back and touch on the first video podcast and then finish up and it should be a little shorter. I had ended with talking about technology and how it's a balance between like Tony Stark or the technology you see in the latest superhero movies and TV shows and like the Jetsons. There's a progression there. I've explained in the first one the fundamentals and I'll just touch on them again. I'm using a site called Roll Die 20. It has a map. You can add assets and tokens. And I was using it to try and see if I could live stream campaigns. So it would be Dungeons and Dragons and superhero type, the first two genres I would do. I did some testing, practiced, got the D&D adventure down. The campaign is The Witcher. A friend of mine helped me out with that. Another friend and a couple of new players helped me out with the superhero RPG. And in that case, we'll focus on that. But I was using the site to free easy way to get in to start role playing especially now with the isolation and people being stuck indoors it has bells and whistles to pay for eventually if i want to and i think if i pay for them all the players benefit so i'll look into that also and i had described how the hero tokens come into the game and how they bring a real good visual aid There'll be, let's say, superheroes you know. I've tried to use some icon or obscure heroes to represent new players in their uniqueness. Unless someone does the artwork from scratch. So I'm using what resources I can. So you might see the Juggernaut, the Hulk, Shazam, Dr. Savannah, Superman. Iron Man, Spider-Man. So I find the images and I put them in as tokens and that'll represent how you move around on the map. You can designate what the squares are, five feet type thing in diameter. You can show in relation to where the villains are and with enough leeway, enough time, you can prepare maps. This is just a, I think it's a Lego Avengers shield image I put in the background as a base of operations to start the campaign. And I explained that the campaign would be uh, an easy to join, easy to play game where everybody could be who they are. So it would be me as a internet personality and or just a troll, I guess. And that's how we met, could be incorporated into the game. Or if you're just someone new who comes into onto the scene. The goal would eventually be live streams, but we'll get to that with practice and the campaigns running smoothly. So maybe I'll record some of the early campaigns and then start again, start fresh, bring in new players in. I think I touched on the best way to do it would be to get one-on-one -on -one talk sessions on Discord or some other means. The site does have a mic and video input. So you have the ability to go on the site, Roll Die 20, not have to worry about that. It'll use, it'll pick up your mic, a camera if you have. I think camera would bog things down with the graphics. but And it has a jukebox. It has lots of options. And dice, I put the... Marvel Saga deck in there. I explained that I'm using the Marvel Saga system for the superhero campaign. 
these are the first two campaigns and things might progress in the future. I might be able to use different systems and play different genres and so on and so forth. And I had gotten to the point where I described the progression of the story where I would be uh, head of a division of S.H.I.E.L.D. I have a couple of players that have played me for years, 20, 30 years, and they could be the players who jump in and out. It's always good to have experienced players. And that we would progress and you would start out new superhero or vigilante and or whatever. We haven't, you don't have to nail down anything. And you would figure maybe street level. So that would be the Daredevils, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. And then you can progress over time and into the Spider-Man category. And your characters would progress and grow. Maybe develop new powers or have new technology. And I was going into the next aspect, which would be a shield... Presence. It could be anything. I've talked about this DC Marvel. It doesn't matter to me what titles we use. And I showed some Quinjets I had put into the game. So if the Shield Helicarriers is a base of operations for all the characters who start and who want to play, they can filter out through the Shield Academies and uh, facilities around the country. So you can actually maybe play from where your state is. And we have technologies that like doorways we could slip through and appear. Or characters can open portals, teleport, speedsters. And from here you would have Quinjets go on missions like the TV shows. And there are different styles here. And I want to look to expand everything. I'm not looking to only uh, highlight Marvel stuff, although that's the ones readily available to me that are quick. To get my hands on it, although not in the character wise, like a Wonder Woman, Superman, but in the assets department, and we'll see where I progress to the next image. And just to show the scale and what I use from a very big franchise. So I'm not doing my homework and exactly going over the whole first video. I'm trying to sum up the um, spirit of the superhero campaign would start being approached by shield possibly find out your origins if it works better perhaps one-on-one -on -one. but I see a potential um, growth where if the campaign's running smoothly with a certain amount of players who are experienced you can start playing with the live chat bringing people in and the progression and where you rank in the Shield Academy, and if you're a street level, uh, mid level, high level, let's say you get up to all a Hulk level strength and abilities and powers when you can get into the Silver Surfers. I want to capture the whole breadth of superheroes. That means you don't have to have powers. How are mortals like Captain America, Batman, um, how do they compete and become? valuable team members that mechanic is built into the system it's the marvel saga system i'm using and these are the little things that could help along the way so you have a base of operations a shield department who has tech and you know you have your belt power utility belts and weapons you're trained and i've mentioned this i think before in a couple other podcasts but your hawkeyes and black widows robin Nightwing, and you could use these assets. So I'm going to try to put in more if I could find easy ones from DC or if ideas are given to me. I'm sure, I'll throw them in. I'm actually thinking of putting in uh, Vipers and perhaps a Battle Star. So I'll get to the third image. And just like all comic books, you'll have. The potential to go into space so the comic book genre in both universes i'll say both or all marvel dc image value there's always that alien presence the solar systems are populated with other beings and races and again i'm using easy assets i found which are star trek ships and in particular um 
I would use the Akira, the big one, uh, all the way top left, the Voyager, and the Defiant are like my key player, captain, lieutenants have those ships, and the bottom left one would be the ship that the new team or the, the new players get to mess with. And again, this is not limited. I maybe throw in Battlestar Galactica, Vipers. Um, I might make like Star Wars a alternate universe or parallel dimension type thing, but I'm not sure. But I'm not against putting in unique ships and getting the flavor of different races. If I'm looking for the invaders from DC or the Kree and Skrull, I would hope I would have the time to prepare. And But if not... I want to get a decent amount of stuff in there to show it no matter what tier you are. If you're fighting at the ground level and street or you're mid tier and high, you'll be able to join in at any time. So just because one of the characters can fly in space and he has a green lantern ring, you know, someone makes a green lantern, your team's in one of the ships and you're, you're on a mission in space. It doesn't mean you stay out there forever, but the storylines get really fun when you can expand into space and other races and cultures and kind of blend it in. Now, I said from the beginning, Marvel is not as complicated and is not as complex as Dungeons and Dragons, but you can make it really colorful, fun. And interesting it doesn't have to be all just um, smashing people through walls you can add a little bit of intrigue a little smart writing in there and it depends on who's playing what people you have playing some people just want to have fun and you know they don't want to make a unique character they want to play spider-man or uh, Cyclops and I explained that some of the tokens I could play with although they become a, dr a drain on you know, the resources and the resolution. I, for some computers, I could see it. Little animations on the uh, tokens. Basically an animated GIF. Maybe even on the ships, too, so I could have lights blinking on them here and there. Uh, perhaps even phasers shooting out. I mean, I can get creative with the time. I had just recovered from an injury. Uh door was slammed on my hand. Now I could make a full only one finger kind of doesn't want to make a full fist but getting there so I'm getting back at it it's a tough time for everybody everybody's trying to get through and this gives me a creative outlet that I've wanted to do for years I mean I do it in my house and we play all the time now we can't and it was an incentive that I got this podcast going the channel I got different types of playlists and this has been something that I've been wanting to do. Right up until the, I guess, what do you call it? Isolation went into effect. I was still currently playing. We would play Marvel and D&D &D alternate, depending on who was here. You know, how many friends you got at the time that, I, that are able to come and play. And now I'm reaching out to those friends and showing them the sites. Seeing if they want to be, if they want to get involved. I got new players that want to, play a couple of them are ready to go they know the system good enough I did a couple of adventures so these podcasts part one and two were just to show what you can do with this site roll die 20 you can use it as a um, tabletop alternative and i think there are better ones and i've talked about it uh ones you pay for but for now just you know, just seeing how it works, have fun, and going through this would show the characters, the assets, the visualization of it, how you can get drawn in, and the progression of low-level characters, for lack of a better word, or street-level, mid-level, high-level. It doesn't matter at one point if someone's been playing for two years and he's got... You know, power's in a certain range. It doesn't mean your 
newly made shield agent can't be on a ship or in the vicinity and helping out with teamwork. So the mechanics of the game help and it's why I chose the Marvel Saga system. I was able to implement it into the Roll Die 20 site, which means there's a deck of fate, a, a fate deck it's called. We'll be able to use it. You draw a hand. When you look at your hand, you know how your day is going to start. The system lends to a Trump-like effect. So basically, if you have your cards and you'll see the color patterns. So strength would be green. Has a picture of the Hulk. Red would be Spider-Man. Purple would be Willpower. Doctor Strange. Intellect would be blue, Mr. Fantastic. And Doom is just a black and white card. When you try to do feats and you try to get things done and you want to try to uh, use espionage or break into a computer or any actions you want to perform depend on the card system that you and what you have in your hand. So if you throw out a card that is under what we call Trump, you get to increase your score by flipping the deck a card off the top of the deck. And if it's the same Trump, you get to flip it again. So it gives a character a chance to perform great feats. That doesn't mean you're going to get a Hawkeye able to punch through a mountain because he can get the same score as what the Hulk got on his score because he didn't get a good hand. But it just shows, you know, when you want to do a feat and Captain America wants to ricochet his shield off something to shut off uh, uh, something on the computer or Hawkeye needs to distract somebody, it lets them able to do that. And with the edge and hand size determines your experience, your health. The mechanics lend well. I've played a couple other systems. I went to die 20, die 6, and the original. My phase rip, I think we called it. And it had this chart and you rolled percentage dice. I really like the Marvel Saga system. And if anybody's interested, you contact me. I have a Discord. I'm on Twitter at Addiction Master. The Deadly Addictions channel on YouTube, obviously, if people listen to a podcast. And it's on like Spotify or something eventually. Think about it. You could start your own. You could join in. We could talk role playing in general. I've explained before, I've adapted the second edition Dungeons and Dragons system and the Marvel Saga system to play almost anything. If it's Western, Star Trek, Star Wars, I basically use these two systems and adapt things to them. So I hope this might interest people. Maybe people get involved. I got a couple, like I said, uh, already interested in starting to play. I got a couple of solid long-time players and a couple of, you know, interest. But everybody's got families and times are tough and there's just a, there's a, a stress and a heaviness in the air. Maybe this could alleviate that. You could jump in, create a character. It could be you. You could play another character, one that you envision, one that you have a association with, something maybe you grew up on. Doesn't matter what universe, what comic book, what genre, really. Because in you think about the superhero world, you have them bring cowboys out of the past. You could see people like the Black Knight or medieval characters. I mean, you could really, and I've done it, so I would do it if uh, if someone really wanted to play a certain character or, you know, try to blend in D&D into Marvel. So if anybody's interested, contact me. Leave a comment. There's... And really awesome potential for this. I'm um, just a big fan in general. I hope to see people respond. I am Joseph F. Olsis. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. 
Stay healthy and take care, everybody. Be well.